this young boy, he was taken at a very young age, as the young children from the noble clans are taken by wet nurses, because the atmosphere of Mecca was not suitable for young babies to grow up in, as there were tents and slaughtering and people coming in and out all the time. And so what would happen is for the first two years of a child's life, a wet nurse would come and take the baby away. And every season, they, they would come into Mecca, these nurses, and they would go and fish for the newborn babies of the land. And so this time, all these wet nurses went into Mecca and many of them went and approached Sayyida Amina السلام, the mother of Rasulullah. And they wanted this special baby. And this is a very, again, different account to the other narration and other famous story that's given where Rasulullah is this orphaned child that no one really wants. And he is not from some prestigious family. That's not given any detail or account. And all the wet nurses, they take all the different babies and they leave Mecca to raise them with the nomads and the Arab tribes so that they could have eloquent tongues and be safe from the atmosphere of Mecca for the first few years of their life. But no one wanted Prophet Muhammad. No one wanted this orphaned little child. And so a woman by the name of Halima as Saadiya, she has shafaqa, she feels pity, she feels sorry for this baby. So she goes and she, she offers herself to take this baby and to raise him for the next few years. Of course, we don't accept such a narration. The other narration that we speak about goes hand in hand with the historical background of his tribe being from Banu Hashim and that all the wet nurses, they wanted Rasulullah. But Amina would not accept because she knew that he was meant for a specific woman. And she wouldn't allow them all to take him until that woman came. And so when Halima came to Amina, Amina knew this was the woman to take this child. And she told her, before you take Muhammad, go and seek permission from his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, who has taken the place of his father. And so Halima goes to Abdul Muttalib, the chief of Quraysh, and she says, I want permission from you to take this baby and raise him for the next few years outside of Mecca. And Abdul Muttalib says, this baby is a very, very special baby. It's not like any child. You take care of this child. I'll pay you whatever you wish. She takes the permission of Abdul Muttalib. She goes back and she has given Rasulullah to take for the next few years. As she leaves Mecca, in her report, she says, I noticed as all the other women looked and saw, I was the one allowed to take this young baby of the Banu Hashim. I was the one to take this miracle baby. And I saw their eyes light with envy because I was the one who taken. him. And she leaves. And there's a reason why all these different narrations are given, as we mentioned. So that Rasulullah seems like he is in need of Halima Sa'diyah. He was in need of various different people. He was in need of Quraysh. He was in need of certain tribesmen. And that's why you find such narrations as, for example, him being someone who was confused all the time. Or when he was a child, he had heard a place of music and partying and he wanted to go. But then God made him fall asleep to protect him from committing a sin. Or that certain people or angels came and opened his heart when he was still a child and took his heart out and cleaned a black dot from his heart in order to purify him and put his heart back in. Another ridiculous narration as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not purify him without removing his heart or any other such ludicrous ideas. Of course, these are all there for a reason because they want to show that certain people were there for Prophet Muhammad and did for him what no one else would do. So later on, if you can imagine, let's say a successful lawyer or president right now, and then someone to come and say, yes, they're a president now, but back in the day, I was the one who did this and that for him and he would never have made it if it wasn't for me. You know, the one that always wants to stick with the famous person. A lot of people tried to live off the fame and name of Rasulullah and to raise their own rank and station at the expense of his. So it shouldn't be any surprise to us when we see these very weird narrations and we think this is not my prophet and they make films out of these narrations. 
very peculiar reports. We don't believe in any of those reports. And we have reports that say the contrary, and we'll bring them forward, just like this one, which tells us of Halima Saadiyah being someone who took the Prophet on because of his prestige and because of his famous family, whereas all the other wet nurses were jealous.